All right, you want to start SIG scanning for your source mod plugins. You've read the wiki, you've read the Allied Modders post all about it, and you still don't get it. That's okay, that's why you're here. So essentially what you're trying to do is go through a game binary and figure out where your function is that you either want to hook or you want to call or memory patch or other random crap you want to do. The first thing you need is a disassembler. There are a few linked in the wiki. I use IDA personally that you see in front of you. There's also Ghidra. It's the NSA's open source disassembler and decompiler. Ghidra also has a decompiler that's really important. It's very useful. For IDA, you can even use Ghidra as a plugin to decompile your code. So essentially, a disassembler is a tool that turns the game binary that you play on into something that is halfway readable to the human eye. It's not perfect, but it's half-assed decent enough to where you can kind of figure out what's happening. I'm going to be using strictly IDA for this tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is obviously open it up, and you're going to want to get your game binaries. These are going to be your shared objects.sos, and for Windows, it's going to be a DLL or a dynamically linked object. To find Windows stuff, it sucks, and you're going to want to use Linux to help you. That's the best strategy I can think of. It's the best strategy in general, really, to use Linux to help you find Windows shit. Because Linux is easy if you have symbols. If you don't have symbols, you're screwed. Sorry. But uh, pretty much every game has a symbol, libra symbol library from some date that you can use to figure out what Windows shit is. But essentially, you're just going to want to look load up both of these into IDA or Ghidra or whatever. And this can take anywhere from between five minutes to an hour. It depends on how big the binary is and whether or not you're on a Threadripper or your mom's laptop. You're probably going to have some options pop up once you load up both objects. The defaults are usually fine. Just click OK and it'll get cracking. It'll use up all of your computer, all of your CPU. So it's not that bad. It's just going to take a while for if shitty laptops and computers like myself. All right, so now you've got both your Windows and your Linux bins loaded up in IDA. The first thing you want to do is to save yourself a headache, go to Options, General, go to Number of Opcode Bytes, change that to 10. I already have it at 10. But that's pretty useful if you know what you're doing. If you don't, that's it's fine. Don't really worry about it. It just helps make things look a little bit better if you're trying to do a signature the hard way. But now you have your function. You want to look for a function. Uh, I'm going to pick one that I know is easy to find. We'll do a hard one later. We're just going to do an easy one now to get your feet wet. Uh, let's get entity 4. This is Team Fortress 2, by the way. Entity for loadout slot. This one's pretty easy to find. So essentially what you're looking for is strings. So you, ha you know your hello, world pro your hello world programs, your strings. Whenever a program is compiled into binary, the strings that you use are put into what's called the data section. And whenever your program tries to say, hey, I want this string, you're gonna, it's going to grab the address from the data section where the string is stored. Uh, let me find a string, for example. You can also look into your subviews. It has strings. Take a hot second to load. Strings are basically your best friend when it comes to SIG scanning. You love strings. You want to find strings in every function you're looking for. And there are a lot of them, especially in big games. So, I am going to scroll until I find a string. <laughs> there, okay. Here's a string. This is CTO player shared on that Halloween ghost mode. This has a string called player turned into ghost. It references the offset of this address you see right here. 
so essentially we load it up, we're in the data section, this is the address of a player turned into ghost. If you want to look, look up for a string, you can control L, control F, and then it's A address. I don't know, A warning, there's plenty of those, there's a trillion warnings. And this is also a string, warning, yada yada yada. This is used in a function. So if we have a string in a function, we know that the function called get material index on Windows will have the string warning, blah blah blah, all that shit. So back to get entity for loadout slot. Now we know what we're looking for. This function doesn't have a string, that's unfortunate but a function that either A calls it, or B, the function that this calls may have a string in it. And these are what's called xrefs, or cross-references. You wanna right-click your function, list cross-references to, and then there's a bunch. It's a whole hell of a lot. Uh, if I can find the one that I know has a string. A lot of these probably do, but I remember seeing one that had a string. Another thing you can do, you can also pull up the source SDK if it's like a basic like C-based player function or C-based entity function. The source SDK for 2013 will have it, and you can load it up in VS Code. The C++ IntelliSense plugin has xrefs. It's very useful, especially for SIG scanning. I'm gonna cheat. I know it's in here somewhere. Input role rare spell. Input role rare spell. And control F that. Yep, it's here. So we have our function input rule verse player rare spell, which calls the function we want. We want this. Also, this is actually really important. If you're on Linux, this this is your signature. You're done. That's it. You finished. That's that's all you need to do. So we're looking for a string. It has this a Halloween Mraz. 38. Okay, that's cool. We can copy that for later. Uh, you can copy this too and put that in your game beta folder. Uh, prefix it with an at symbol that is required so the game knows it's looking for a mangled name and not an actual byte signature. So, the keyword, you, strings are just clues, that's basically what they are, but since, let me check it, see. This is used once, awesome. So to Windows we go, control L, it's a Halloween Mraz 38. This, load up the X references too. Ah, cool, it's used more than once, that's fine. Uh, the function names you can clearly see do not exist in Windows, that is why you use Linux to help you find Windows. So we need to do a little magic. It's clearly not this one. This doesn't look anything remotely close to, oops, remotely close to this. It is going to move a pointer. I, this means move, obviously. So back to this. Try number two. Eh, this looks close. Nope, we don't have the effect staff in here, do we? Clearly not. This is an event cross spectral bridge. This has player. So we're looking for a function that has these street these three strings in it. So, not that one either. It's probably this last function. No, it's not. That's awesome. Gotta love it. Huh. This is the data section, maybe? Huh? No. Yeah, well, it's one of these. It's probably the second one. And that's how it is. You do stupid shit until you figure out what it does, and then you figure it out, and then you get it right. Awesome. It is none of these. That is actually incredible. Huh. Alright, well then we'll use the other one. A cross spectral bridge. That's cool. A cross spectral bridge. It's probably used more than once. It's an event. No, it's not. Cool. Alright. What the hell? What the hell? Oh, that's, that's, oh man, that's what, okay, well, that's cool. IDA isn't that smart yet. Well, the Windows addresses are usually the same. Uh, 
damn, oh well. Well anyway, we have the function that calls the function we want. Uh, also, this is a dynamic cast. That's a pretty obvious giveaway if you're looking for something. Uh, it was the first function in the function. Top of the subroutine. This is probably it. Pushes, moves, zero, the nine, zero, the nine. That's probably us. Cool. Well, we already have our signature for Linux. Let's grab Windows. So, to get a Windows signature, either A, you do it the hard way, and you get all these bytes and turn them into a signature, and then the uh, the raw memory addresses, which would be this, 21, you'd have to wildcard these, but that's way too much effort. Nobody has time for that. Alt F7, if you have it downloaded. If you don't, I will link it below in the description. You want to get make sig, which is an IDC script. There's also one for Ghidra. It's a Python script. You want to run this. Make sure you're clicked. Make sure you're clicked inside of the function you want to get the address or the signature from. You're gonna run this. Then it's gonna take a half second. Boom! That's your signature. You're done. That's it. That's all it takes. And then you want to load up your game data file that you most definitely want to have. Uh, trash. Trash. I, I'm lazy and I just copy game data from another file and then I just replace what I need. Uh, trash, trash, don't need these anymore. Obviously if you want to keep things maintained, you want to put notes, for example, like, ah, uh, this XRF has string, uh, what was it called, Merasmus teleport, whatever. That's good practice. You want to do that so you don't uh, forget how to get this function again, especially if it's a shitty function that takes you forever to find. So to find to save your game data, genuinely, how it goes is the game directory name tf2 for me tf2 dot whatever that text. Uh, obviously, change your game to what it needs to be. And it's get entity for loadout slot. This is our Windows signature. And get that. Oh yeah, libraries. That's also kind of important. The majority of the time, you're going to load up your server binary. So uh, Linux was something. It's this mangled name. It's called a mangled name, by the way. These don't change very often unless the parameters change in the function. Otherwise, you probably don't need to touch Linux ever again. Alright, I forgot the at symbol. At symbol. So, Linux and Mac, it's whatever psychopath runs a Mac server, it's the same. And that's it, you're done. And obviously, do it correctly in your plugin. Load the game data properly. Make sure your params are correct too. Don't mess up. That's basically it. But that was an easy function. Let's try something really freaking insane. I'm gonna pick a random function, actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one, I don't even know anymore. Eh, it looks pretty trashy. No strings. Don't see any strings. It's pretty monolithic. Nope, we have these two. Back to back two. That'll actually really easy to find then. Uh, Pull up this, what was it called? A spell, lightning. Oh, yeah, and for um, strings, they don't care about underscores, spaces, or capitalization or anything. Uh, it was one, but it's probably different, maybe. Spell, lightning, ball, parent, blue. No, it's different. Control L, A spell, learning. Uh, it was hit red and then hit blue. So it's used twice. Nope, not that one. So it's probably the other one. Yep, that's definitely it. We have whatever function we just pulled out of our ass. This. Now you have it. And there's that. Good job. Alt F7. And makes it right here. Boom, done. 
Uh, I didn't even showcase the decompilation. I have that on IDA. It costs a lot of money unless you want to browse the d deep web, the dark web for a free copy. Uh, there's also decompilation for Linux. So this is shitty C code. It's slightly more readable, but the main thing you're going to want to use this is for drawing comparisons. It's got complete gobbledygook. Oh, and uh, the backslash gets rid of casting. I get rid of it because it looks terrible. It doesn't really help unless you really want to know what the thing is. But essentially you can see the comparisons, what things look like, how different they are. Linux optimizes differently than Windows. Uh, on Linux, some things are more forcefully inlined. Inline basically means a function that you have, instead of being called, I don't know, you this, it is instead taken out and then placed into the function as a whole. That is a shitty way to explain it, but that's basically what an inline function is. It's just a function that isn't called, it's just like a macro, if you know what that is. It's basically that, only cleaner. Uh, obviously this is the function we are looking for, it just, you can see things look different. This isn't even in the Linux, is it? No, it's, oh it is. It's just a different place. It's much further down because things, like a comparison to zero, it could be, uh, this is, this is greater than zero, and up here it could be, ah, this is less than zero, or something insane. But that's basically it for easy, I have symbols progress.